Welcome, welcome to the podcast. This is Needed Conversations. We're your hosts, Ryan and Victoria Cole. So glad that you could listen in today. It's going to be an exciting conversation as we are continuing our talks on the topic of purpose. Yeah, we started last week and we are actually in season four, if you can believe it. So we have so many episodes, so much information to share with you guys. But if you are hopping in this week and you have not listened to the last week's episode, we encourage you to do so after you finish this episode as well, because this is going to be really good information before you start writing that list, the resolutions and why you should throw it away. Yeah. And if you probably already have your New Year's resolution list, then that was really what we discussed last week is kind of how your new year's resolutions never work if your goals and your strategies are not cemented to an eternal purpose or an eternal mission that is only given by god right so every time we set goals and resolutions without a connection to our creator we basically find ourselves in this self-destructive pattern And while there may be small victories along the way, um, more than likely you'll end up in self-sabotage. That means you'll lose 20 pounds and gain 30 back. Or you will, um, you know, you'll do good for a while and then you'll stumble again. But really, it's about consistency and longevity. That's what matters in this race of life. It's about stamina and it's not about the short sprints. Um, but it's more about, uh, staying the course throughout, you know, the, the, the journey of your life. And and that's what purpose is all about. And when you build strategies and goals around an eternal mission, then you're not, you're not battling with your insecurities and you're not battling with the deficiencies in your soul, the holes in your soul that you're trying to fill with all of these superficial goals. Those goals are rooted to something more eternal and tangible. I hope that makes sense. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, one of the things that I think we admire as people is watching other people walk in their purpose and we're like, wow, I want to do the same thing. And our purpose is not to make you like those people so you feel confident to that. We want you to be confident in what God has called you to do. Those people are confident and pushing forward and doing great things because they know you know, their, their vision and they're going at it full force and they're not trying to copy anybody else. And that's what we want to encourage you um, and help you find is that purpose so that you are authentic to yourself and you're staying in your lane, you're running the race and you're not comparing yourself with anybody else. Yeah, absolutely. So we talked about purpose and what it means to walk in purpose. And so we're going to continue that conversation But it's an exciting week because we have just started um, the Step Into Your Purpose Challenge, which is a week that you're going to spend with us, and we're going to be walking every single day, physically walking. We're going to be praying together, and then I'm going to be teaching you about purpose every single afternoon. So um, join our group, gain accountability Um, by texting the word PURPOSE to 864-428-7131, 864-428-7131. Just text the word PURPOSE, join that challenge, and then I'm going to be sending you a free prayer. It's 30 minutes that I've recorded, and it's built around this concept of purpose. So you're going to listen to that while you put your body in motion. You could walk around your neighborhood, you could get on the treadmill, um, whatever you decide to do to get active in that moment. I want your body to be in motion while you're downloading these ideas into your spirit, these biblical principles. And then there's some time at the end of this prayer where there's just music and you can meditate um, on what you just listened to, talk to God and receive uh, strategies for your life that are rooted to that eternal purpose that he's going to reveal to you. Um, So we're talking about purpose um, and we're in this challenge. We're putting our our bodies and minds into motion. And uh, today I want us to talk about um, the idea, um, really the title of this podcast, You're Not What You Do. Mm -hmm. Um, Last year, we kind of instituted some new family traditions 
part of that was this prayer that we got from Jefferson Beef. You stole my thought. <laughs> Is that what you were going <laughs> to yeah, talk about? Was. Go I, ahead. I mean, to me, it was powerful because that's one of the statements that really stuck out to me when we taught our kids to say, I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I'm the beloved of God. It's who I am. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. And um, that's one of the things that really stuck with me is teaching your children that you're not what you do. Just because you are full force doing something in the season does not mean that it defines you. And if for some reason God shifts you to a different assignment, you don't completely lose yourself. And I think that's one of the struggles that all of us deal with, you know, when we transition from a job, when we have a loss of a family member, I feel like that it really shakes us to the core where we um, get in a place of like, now I'm lost. Now what do I right. do? So that was such a powerful statement uh, for uh, us, and that's something we try to teach our kids to say pretty much on a daily basis so they can also meditate on those uh, words as well. Maybe at this time and age they may not understand all the statements that they're saying, but I know once they grow to a little bit older they will start kind of understanding what am I truly saying and then actually thinking, okay, I am actually I'm not what, what I do and what does that mean for me? And then actually opening up that conversation to really help them discover what God's purpose is for their life. Yeah. And that's really great to establish that habit with your children. I know when I'm taking my daughter to school, that's what we do every single morning. We pray, we say that little declaration, and I'm also teaching her the difference in, you know, uh, prayer that's a conversation between you and God. And then making a declaration out mm. of your mouth, speaking into the environment that you live in. Mm. So, um, and that has carried on into a lot of things that we do. My daughter is a planner, which is a good thing, but sometimes that could lead her into kind of obsessive behavior, um, being worried and concerned about what are we doing tomorrow? What, what am I wearing? What is this? What is that? And we know that the Bible says, don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink or wear, but seek first the kingdom. And so even now at night when I'm tucking her into bed and she kind of goes into this little frenzy, I just look at her and I say, Mila, I don't have to hurry and I don't have to worry. And she goes, I don't have to worry. I can trust my friend Jesus. That's right. And that puts her mind at ease. She goes to bed and it's all centered around that first statement. I'm not what I do and I'm not what I have. That means even though we're active and we're working and we're, we are busy doing the work of the Lord every single day, living our lives, loving one another, enjoying the beauty of God's creation, we are not defined by our present um, assignment. And every one of us has an assignment from my daughter's age, she's five years old, to, to us. We're in our 30s. We have assignment, and your purpose is executed from assignment to assignment. And once you understand the problems that God has called you to help solve and you attach those gifts that have been cultivated in his presence to that problem, then the Lord will plant you at a certain place that might be on your job, that may be in a certain city, that might be at a certain school, um, at a certain church, and God will give you an assignment to utilize your gifts for his greater good. And um, like Victoria said, and I'm bad at this too, I'm very um, nose to the ground, headstrong when it comes to um, having a goal or an assignment in front of me. And I'm able to really focus, and that's a good thing, but I also crash and burn as well. When that assignment is over, I'm kind of scrambling a little bit because of the intensity that I put into that assignment, and now I'm struggling to find my bearings. And that can lead to depression, anxiety, which I have struggled with, um, and the Lord has helped me to overcome. But um, every single day, that's a process that I'm walking with the Lord out that to know that my present assignment doesn't define who I am as a son of God, who I am in Christ. And as you're walking out your purpose, this is a vitally important principle for you to anchor to. Because if you um, find yourself consumed in the people that you're serving and the current assignment where you're at, the job that you're at, for some reason, our minds immediately go to 
um, you know, resting in that this is going to last forever. And um, the fact of the matter is it's not going to last forever. And, and if, especially if you're younger, I'm not saying this won't happen when you're older, but when you're younger, God moves you from assignment to assignment a lot quicker yes. because those younger years, he's refining your character. He's using these challenges and these situations like sandpaper to smooth out the rough edges. And it's when you get older that you move into a slower burn where you might be at a place or an, an assignment for 10, 15 plus or more years. But when you're younger, those assignments might look like five years or less. And you have to be rooted in a confidence in your relationship with God so that when that season shifts, that you are not distraught. Yeah, I think one of the challenges in our society is that we are taught to always have this high, whether it's with things or with people or whatever, we're always like promoted be on this high, be on this high. And I feel like that's why our society is experiencing so much of the lows. And I mean, we talk about, you know, mental health and issues that we're dealing with anxiety. It's because that we are given, you know, all the social media and so much exposure to be on this high that when we like step back, it's like we don't have any bearings. And like you said, you just crash and burn. It's like, you don't know what else to do. Your mind doesn't know what to do. And I, I love this tip that we learned from Dr. Caroline Leaf. She said, it's really good for you to even sit down in a chair 15 minutes a day and not do anything. Just sit down. Don't look at your phone. It's called daydreaming. And it's basically allowing your mind to wander and allowing your mind to process so that you're able to kind of actually process what you were doing today, you know, have some thoughts. Those are like the brain building times. And so in the last podcast, we talked about a slow burn. And so I think it's just understanding your assignment that God has given you. And, you know, even if you move away from it, it doesn't, you know, make you crash and burn. So I, I even remember how Paul, you know, says in the scriptures that I've learned to be content in much and in little I mean, Paul was going out and ministering amongst many people, and then he would be imprisoned, and then he would be taken to these other places. And he said that I learned to be content in regardless whatever season that I'm being put in, um, whatever my assignment is, because that's not what defines me. Stuff doesn't define me. People doesn't define me. Circumstances don't define me. What defines me is the assignment that God has given me. I'm bold and I'm confident in it, and I believe that God is going to fulfill it um, you know, uh, 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 fulfill it and give me the, the resources and the energy and the stamina and the connections that I need to be able to do so as well. And being able to walk away from an assignment with grace and humility. Um, too many of you in, end assignments badly. And, yeah. uh, so that's one thing I want you to recognize and is that your purpose and your assignment are different. Your purpose is executed from assignment to assignment, but don't get your present assignment confused with your purpose. Oh, that's so good. Because your assignments change and your assignments are what you agree to. Your assignments are opportunities afforded to you by God that you may say yes or you may say no to. We do have a decision in the matter. And the fact is our destiny is determined by our decisions. And, and, and our lives move at the speed of our relationships. And that's really at the core of our assignments. And probably the reason why we get our assignments confused with our purpose is because those assignments have to do with people. And yeah. we become so endeared to those relationships. And, and we find ourselves intertwined in um, those people and those circumstances that we really have lost ourselves. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the concept of losing yourself in your work or being a workaholic? It's not that you're doing so much. It's not that you have so much activity going on. It's that your identity has been consumed by what you're doing every single day. And you've lost sight of who you are and even your relationship with God. And we're all guilty of it. And so right now, this is probably setting some of you free to be able to look at your present assignment and say, this is not, this is not my eternal purpose. This is temporary. Your purpose is determined by God. 
And that purpose, no matter where you are in the world, is going to seek out expression. Mm. It's something that's going to happen, and it's almost uncontrollable. You put me in the middle of another country, whether that be China or whether that be Nigeria or take me to London, wherever, no matter if I'm there or if I'm here in the United States, my purpose is going to start finding expression and it's going to start searching for an assignment and the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to an assignment. So many people get caught up in in some of these life decisions like, should I go here or should I go there? Or, you know, is this God's will for me? And really, um, the Bible says, whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. And so as long as your focus is on him and your relationship with him, and you're allowing him to speak into you, your identity, Mm -hmm. then... um, It doesn't really matter where you go. An assignment is going to find you, and you can be confident in that. There are these major moments, these milestone moments in our lives that we can get hung up on. And people say, I'm in transition. Well, transition is not meant to last years. Transition is meant to be quick, and transition is meant to be intense, and it's meant to rattle you from one place of complacency and one assignment and shift you into your next. And don't get don't get your transitional season confused with the next assignment that God has for you and settle in a place that is temporary. And then when the well drives up dries up and the the ravens start bringing uh, stop bringing you bread as we can relate to the story of uh, Elijah Uh, that you're not shaken, that you say, okay, my ear is pressed to the mouth of God and there is provision for me in the next. Mm -hmm. Don't stay in that season of transition and don't marry your assignment. Marry your mission. Marry your mission and not your assignment. That's a a a groundbreaking statement Mm -hmm. because so many people, they, they marry the assignment and even listen to this especially when you're in a slow burn kind of assignment in your older years, right? Let's just say God has you on an extended assignment for 15 plus years, right? Methods change, strategies change. How you approach that assignment assignment is not going to be the same on year 15 as it was on day one. You are going to be ha- you are going to have to be pliable and moldable to say, well, how I approach this assignment then is not necessarily how I'm going to approach it now. And if you marry your method and marry your assignment, then you are going to find yourself in a defeated place and not really finding the results and the significance that you hoped you would. And then you're going to blame it on the assignment when you should have been focused more on the eternal purpose, what it is that God has called me to do. Now, it always is connected to people and it's always connected to problems. And when you find that, then it's a little bit easier to know that if I'm called to solve this problem, which affects this certain group of people, that um, this is where those people are and this is where those problems are. Mm -hmm. This is where I need to plant myself, right? Yeah, my manager used to always say, problems are opportunities for improvement. And I used to hate that so much because none of us want to deal with it. Like, you know what I mean? On daily basis, thinking about problems. But like you said, purpose is attached to problems. So don't escape it. Um, You know, God has called you to troubleshoot, whatever it is. Maybe you went through something in your life and God wants you to speak to those people and maybe they're hurting and they will do things and say things that they truly don't mean. They're doing it out of their hurt. And so even understanding that will really help you to uh, build the right relationships, build the right boundaries around those relationships, because that's another issue that we deal with in regards to purpose and going from assignment to assignment. Like you said, we don't create right boundaries with people and then we get hurt. And so whenever we transition, our transition becomes, or that stage of transition becomes more lengthy because now we have church hurt, or now we have these people disappointed me and I don't even want to know if I want to get into that. But that's the purpose, that, that's the plan of the enemy, is to really get you down deep in the core of who you are and basically uh, trip you up so that you will say, I'm not going to do or follow this way because I've been hurt and I, my law my trust has been broken 
and these people have did me wrong. But honestly, if you start kind of pointing it back to you, and I'm not saying those people did not hurt you, but I think it really starts pointing back at you and, and, and God starts showing you, you know, how you could have maybe better done the situation or how you can forgive or how you can cover and love this person or this, you know, whatever it is that you went through. And you really start seeing that instead of point outwardly, you're starting to point inwardly. And I think that's also a part of God's plan is to continue to refine your character, to prepare you for those um, uh, next assignments that he's going to give you. Mm -hmm. And I just want to add an additional perspective to that as well. You know, a lot of times we blame people for the hurt in our lives. Um, and, and that's true. There are certain things that are out of our control, but also whenever the Holy spirit is tapping on your shoulder and saying, this assignment is ended and you've married that assignment instead of marrying your eternal purpose, it's going to be easier for you to shrug off that tapping on your shoulder because God is not going to scream at you in the face. He's not going to, um, it's that he's not going to be loud and boisterous and throw a temper tantrum if you decide not to obey. But as the grace shifts, you will begin to recognize that the things that, uh, that once you had grace for and had grace for you as well will begin to lift those relationship that the Lord placed grace upon, you know, will no longer have that specific grace. People will get on your nerves. They will start to offend you. And the Lord will allow these things to get you uncomfortable enough where you'll then return to him. And he can say, well, I told you this three months ago, but your season has shifted. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times it's like Jonah who the Lord said, go to this place over here. This is your assignment. And he says, no, I'm not going to do that. So he gets on a ship. And what happens? He moves from under the grace and the anointing of God. And everything in the earth conspires with, with, with your purpose to push you into your destiny. And you can call it trouble and trials and pain. But really, um, it, it's about squeezing you out of, uh, of the womb of potential and into purpose. And that's what happened with Jonah is the wind and the waves started crashing on this boat and the sailors were like, what's going on? They were all going to be capsized. And Jonah said, it's me. It's definitely, at least he had the maturity enough to say, mm -hmm. it's me. Throw me overboard and you're going to be okay. They threw him overboard. The, the whale came he was in the belly of the well for three days and he had, he contemplated and he repented and he changed his mind and he said, okay, Lord, I'm ready to shift in my assignment. And the same is with us. You might not be swallowed up with a well, but look at your life circ you know, life circumstances. Um, there's a difference in the problem that God has anointed you to face and bring solutions to. And then all of a sudden seeing upheaval in your life and you're saying, what is going on? Now, sometimes it might be an indication that you've struck a chord in your purpose, and that takes some discernment to understand. But a lot of times it may be God saying, shift your assignment, especially if you've been there for a while, and especially if those challenges um, have to do with certain people that you no longer have grace and tolerance for like you once did. And, and it could be people that you love. It could be people who you've said is your best friend, your mentor, your confidant, your this or that. Um, but emotionally, spiritually, they've gotten off the bus. They may be still present in your life. Um, and, and really, that's the root of where kind of these traumas come from. I think the more mature you get and, and the older you get, the more you start listening the first time when the Holy Spirit taps on your shoulder and you obey and you start to see that your transitions are a lot smoother, that they're less traumatic, right? Yeah. Because you've been there, done that, and you're like, listen, if I don't listen to the Holy Spirit, I know it's going to happen. As the cloud moves, the cloud by day, the fire by night, like the children of Israel, um, we've got to move. As inconvenient as it may be, we've got to move. Think of the children of Israel. All of the artifacts that were made of gold and all kinds of metals and wood. This was timber. This was this was an entire spectacle, right? 
and they just got everything down. They pitch their tents, they, you know, they got themselves settled and they start seeing that cloud shift. Maybe if they were there for a year or two, they might feel like, okay, I'm ready to go. But what if they were there for 24 hours and they were like, are you kidding me? We literally just picked this stuff up and moved it from a mile away. And here we are moving again. Um, and that, that's us in our state of laziness and being overly comfortable in, in our environment. And you want to rest in your assignment, but you also have to recognize when the grace lifts and when God is calling you to shift. Yeah, for sure. I think also one more pointer before we wrap this up, but that one thing that we've learned with Ryan too, is that a lot of times when you are, in a specific assignment, yes, God has put you there, but you also, um, oftentimes people project or want you to be what they need you to be, like a filler. Uh-huh. And so just also recognizing that, um, and that's not to say that it's a bad thing, um, but sometimes I think that kind of also makes you feel, start feeling kind of miserable because you start realizing that it's not something that you feel like God has uh, purposed you to do, but you're doing it because you know, you're doing the work of ministry or uh, you don't want to disappoint somebody or you don't want to have to say no. And that's the hardest thing for a lot of people is to say no. Now, if God has put you in that assignment and God has told you to submit, that's another thing. You don't want to use this as an excuse and say, God told me, because I've heard so many times, God told me, Mm-hmm. And really, they just they're trying to escape the problem. They're trying to escape the confrontation. And again, it's not like that somebody else will be able to tell you or you're trying to run away from your problems. But sometimes being under a leadership or somebody that has, you know, oversight and, um, you know, maybe somebody that you've looked up to or have mentored you may have seen you walk through these uh, processes before. And they're just trying to push you into that place that God has called you to be in. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. Confrontation is uncomfortable or somebody telling you that you're not doing it where you're supposed to be doing is uncomfortable. And so it's easy to say, I'm going to pick up and go because I don't yeah. have to deal with this. So. And it's important to have those wise counsels yes, whenever for sure. you are in a season of transition and that you listen to them. Sometimes you can be all in your head and you can confuse your emotional attachments with discernment and uh, what God says, you know, just because it feels a certain way in your emotions does not mean that God is telling you to do such and such, right? Yes. There's a lot of people that can stroke you and, you know, make your ego feel really good and make you want to stay in a certain situation. Um, But you've got to be able to be mature enough to see beyond those things and say, Lord, what are you really saying? If I don't, even if I don't agree with it, there's been many times when I've gotten a no in my spirit, but my heart wanted yes. And um, I tried to talk myself out of that no. And the more and more I tried to talk myself out of that no, the, the less and less peace I had about it. And um, thankfully enough, you know, I haven't made all the right decisions, that's for sure. Um, I can think of a couple of decisions that I've made even in the last several years that I'm like, man, I should have listened to that still small voice instead of the raging fire of my emotions in that present moment. Um, and, And really, that's kind of the Esau mentality, which is. I'm hungry right now, so let me settle for this bowl of beans mm. and get rid of my inheritance. Oh, that's so good. Um, yeah. So you you can't make uh, long-term decisions off of those temporary feelings, and even when it comes to relationships. I think that uh, we we automatically go to, well, this relationship needs to be completely severed, and that may not be the case. A lot of times when you're shifting assignments – your relationships will just have to be negotiated, renegotiated. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. We're going to go into the impacts that your purpose has on your relationships, including your marriage. So you want to stick around for that. But before we end out today, as we talk about kind of this performance mentality and the whole idea that we raised at the beginning of this podcast, you are not what you do. I want to read this scripture because it really speaks to this performance mentality that we get into. And and what God is calling you to do is to move from a place of rest and grace. What does it mean to do your work from a place 
of rest. I've done a, an entire series on this on my YouTube channel called Greater Works. It's really a message that God has just kind of developed in me over the last two and a half years. And eventually I'm going to write a book on it because I think it's well needed, especially in, in our generation, um, millennials in particular, is this orphan mentality where we are striving for affirmation and acceptance through the work that we do every single day. But Psalms 127 talks about the blessing of the Lord. Well, how does the blessing of the Lord come upon us? Well, start at verse one. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor over it in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays alert in vain. In vain you get up early and stay up late, working hard to have enough food. Yes, he gives sleep to the ones, to the one he loves. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, children a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons born in one's youth. Happy is the man who has filled his quiver with them. Such men will never be put to shame when they speak with their enemies at the city gate. Now that's the entire chapter of Psalms 127. Um, and it's a powerful one because it speaks about doing your work from a place of rest and assurance that it's the Lord doing the work through you and you are just being used as the instrument that makes all the difference. And here you could hustle, as they like to say, in the world of entrepreneurship or in, in this generation of workers. You could be waking up super early, staying up super late, and it all be in vain. What about moving quicker while while moving slower. How, how can I do that? Well, instead of running all over the place and missing the mark half the time, what about walking more strategically? Mm -hmm. And that means That's you so get good. to your destination quicker, but you've exerted less energy. And really that comes through a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit telling you every single day, pick up this, lay down this. And, um, and so even today, as we're talking about, you're not what you do. I want you to take away from this that yes, you're going to work. You may be listening to this on your drive to work. Yes, you have a family to take care of. But at the end of the day, you're not defined by the hats that you put on and take off every single day. You are defined by your relationship with God and who he says you are. You are a son of God. You are a child of God. He's already affirmed and approved you. And now let's move from this place of grace. And the reason he's affirmed and approved you is the entire message of the gospel of the kingdom, the good news. Why is it good news? Because you didn't have to earn it. The reason we can operate from this place of grace is because of the sacrifice of Jesus and his blood that was shed for us so that we could again enter into this relationship with Christ and move from the place of dominion and move in this calling that God has called us to that was established in the book of Genesis and yet we sabotaged because of sin. And so if you are out there today um, and you are searching for your purpose, know that it first starts with a relationship with Jesus. And if you have not given your heart to Jesus and allowed, and allowed him to become Lord of your life, I want you to make that decision today. And I want you just to say a simple prayer. Uh, um, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again for my sins. Um, and I'm alive in you. Come be the Lord of my life and 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 uh, direct my steps. In Jesus' name, amen. It don't even have to be those exact words, but whatever you say, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that, that, that Jesus is Lord and you are saved. Now, what does that mean? Your spirit is now brought to new life and is quickened by his Holy Spirit. And now you have a guide to lead you through this life so that you don't run around um, aimlessly um, with a chaotic spirit, but you have more direction and hope and meaning to everything that you do every day. And yes, this message is still relevant for believers who have accepted Christ, but have allowed the cares of this world to come in and stomp out that sweet relationship that you once had. If there's anything that you can do in this year that's going to change the course of your life is to get your relationship with Christ right. Amen.
whether you've known him before or whether you're accepting him for the first time. Focus on that relationship and trust me, you're going to see everything in your life begin to move into the right place. Um, Honey, you have any final words? Yeah, I just wanted to encourage everybody to sign up for the Step Into Your Purpose Challenge. It starts this week. It's 428-7131. All you have to do is just text the word purpose and um, we'll plug you in and we will do the the full seven days of walking and praying. What a great way to start uh, a new year. That's right. And all the information is on your screen. And in the description below, you can sign up on my website too, ryancoleempowerment.com slash purpose challenge. And finally, before we sign off, um, we are a nonprofit ministry, Empowered Culture Ministries, and everything we do is at, is because of the support of people just like you who partner with us every single day. And some people partner uh, with as little as 10 or $25 a month, or maybe you can just give one time. Would you go to my website right now and become a partner, donate to this ministry, and help us reach more with the gospel of the kingdom? Yes. Thank you for joining us today, and we will see you guys on our next episode next week. 